All right, everybody. So, so the question always is, and this is this all comes on the PayPal article that we just talked about. For transactions, are we going to be taxed? And you know, I told you my opinion, but it's best to get a expert, and that is why I invited Sheehan Chandra Car to come on. Sheehan, thanks for coming on to answer this question. Before we start, just give like a like a for people who don't know you, who don't know you, tell us a little <laughs> about yourself, and then we'll get to that question. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a CPA. You can uh, follow me on Twitter at the Crypto CPA. Um, I mean, coming from public accounting background, uh, I'm with a company called Coin Tracker, uh, which helps you know calculate crypto taxes. But yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I get a lot of questions and happy to answer. And very active on Twitter. Perfect. I'll I'll link uh, Sheehan's uh, Twitter handle and uh, also the company he works for and then or uh, uh, works with. And we'll go from there. So Sheehan, that is the question right now. So as people go into PayPal and they're using Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum and Litecoin, and they're starting to do transactions on the merchants like myself, what happens as far as like a trans or as far as a taxable event? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, every time you spend cryptocurrency, uh, because it's treated as a property as opposed to a currency, at least in the, you know, in the eyes of the IRS, that triggers a taxable event. So uh, which is kind of bad because it kind of uh, it, it's it's bad meaning like you know every time you spend something there's a there's a taxable event and you don't want that. Uh, want but that. that yeah, that's <laughs> what we had to deal with unfortunately um, until the laws change one day. Okay, so it sounds to me just to make sure. So every time these guys send some, spend something, it's going to be a somewhat of a taxable event. It's it's okay if you're like like we like I, I have thought about. Buying Bitcoin really fast and then you know uh, spending it really fast, which I think would be crazy. Uh, or as opposed to like somebody like me who's invested like three four years and I take that Bitcoin from a long time ago and then start to transact. Yeah, correct. I mean, at the same time, I just don't understand like why would anybody spend Bitcoin to buy like you know day to day stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the PayPal story like it's good for to I guess to, for creating vanity, uh, you know, in this space. But if you're in the right mind, like you wouldn't be spending you know Bitcoin to buy buy, buy stuff. So uh, I would say if you really need to use a cryptocurrency, like you know, transact, you know, use a stable currency. So you're not losing out or there's no tax implications. Makes sense. And I guess I will retract what I just said because my Bitcoin that I purchased years ago, I can't put that on the, the PayPal network because you can't move uh, cryptocurrency between PayPal. It's all paper Bitcoin, paper eCash and all that stuff. All right. So, all right. Thanks, Gian. So this, that answers that. Here's the big question. And I think this is the most confusing thing. I get this a lot. And the question is, well, I don't want to deal with IRAs. I don't want to deal with anything else. What I'm going to do is when the bull run comes, I'm going to take out a loan. And with that loan, I'm going to pay off everything. And uh, that's the way I won't have to pay taxes because you don't have to pay taxes on loans. However, you have to pay back the loans at some point. So Sheehan, how would that work out? We don't want to avoid taxes or you know, like be a tax dodger because uh, no one wants to be that guy or that gal. But uh, how can we minimize taxes? And is this even a uh, possible type of thing we could potentially do? Yeah, yeah. There's no easy yes and no answer. I guess for me, there are two types of loans. You know, you have your appreciated, you know, Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency. You just give it to some party and then you get USD as a loan proceed. So that type of, you know, loan structure is, is pretty clear. But what complicates is that, you know, you put your Bitcoin with another party, and as loan proceeds, you're getting another type of cryptocurrency. Then the question is, when you spend that second cryptocurrency which you received as proceeds, what's the cost basis for that? Uh, Do we assign a zero cost basis or do we assign a cost basis equivalent to the fair market value of that second cryptocurrency you received? But it doesn't make any sense because you didn't actually pay for it. Uh, again, I, I might be a little confusing, but think think about the situation from the IRS point of view. Like, mm-hmm. why would the IRS allow you to put your appreciated Bitcoin? Let's say, let's take an example. You got into Bitcoin when it was like ten bucks, and now you're sitting on like let's say a million bucks of Bitcoin. So you are essentially putting that million dollars worth of Bitcoin to some uh, third party, and you are creating liquidity without mm-hmm. triggering a taxable event. Right. Now think about how the IRS would see it. So 
I've actually asked about this question from the IRS. You know, they're still catching up. They're still trying to figure out the laws that are on, you know, airdrops and et cetera. They haven't even thought about DeFi space yet, but that's where it is today. So it is doable. I think, the, you know, the practical approach is to kind of, you know, because there's lack of guidance, you know, just treat it as a non-taxable event. But there's a huge exposure for you when it comes to tax, especially if you're sitting on large amount of unrealized gains and you keep taking loans and keep accessing liquidity without ever paying taxes. So it, it won't work in the in the eyes of the IRS in the long run. In the long run, I think you can keep taking loans and loans and loans, but that would be detrimental to yourself as time goes on. Because at some point, you have to pay all this stuff back with the percentage of whatever it is. I think that would be the big issue for me. And then. Some people have said in the comments, like, well, what I'll just do is I'll just, like I said, like, I will um, take out a loan for Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever else it is, and then I'll just pay it back in USDT or Tether or whatever else. But again, taxable events are when you cash out your cryptocurrency, as I assume, as, as, I, as I see it. Also, a taxable event is when you go from cryptocurrency to cryptocurrency, Bitcoin to Ethereum, Ethereum to USDT or Tether or whatever else. And then when you're paying for goods and services, because the next thing I get is, well, I'm not going to even pay taxes because uh, in the future, everything will just be, I will just pay Bitcoin for that car. Or I will pay Bitcoin for someone to mow my lawn, which sounds, sounds ridiculous right now because of what we're just going to go over uh, a little bit. But yeah, I just don't see that to, to be an option yet. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, again, every time you spend your Bitcoin, even though like it doesn't make sense unless like, you know, you're in the weeds for taxes. Yeah. Uh, if you got the Bitcoin for thousand bucks, and if you're getting a car like you know five years later, when that Bitcoin is twenty thousand, IRS is going to tax you on the nineteen thousand dollars of difference because in their eyes, you created nineteen thousand dollars worth of wealth, and IRS being a you know revenue collection agency, they want to they want to tax it unfortunately. So that's the, the law today. There's a, there's always a way around it, and if you want to find a, not a way around it, if you want to find the best options, I will say. Contact Sheehan. I'll put his information in the description. Sheehan, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you answering these questions and taking the time. Thank you.